Welcome in, everybody, to another edition of the UWF Football Show. This is Head Coach Caleb Nobles, University of West Florida. I'm Will Kennedy, and we're with you after another win. First road win of the season. Coach, congratulations. A trip to McKendree. A long trip. How you feeling? Very long trip. No, very excited to get a win. It's obviously tough to win on the, uh, any level of football, so uh, it was a hard-fought win. Our guys knew that it was going to be a challenge. They're, they're a big, long, uh, fast team, so good opportunity to go up there and play against a good team and then uh, you know be able to get a W. It is Lebanon, Illinois is the spot a little bit below St. Louis or outside of St. Louis. So you guys make the trip up there, leave on a Thursday, games on a Saturday, perfect day for football. I mean, temperatures in the 70s, blue skies, not the humidity we're used to Absolutely. down here. I know, though, you know, trying to make sure that everybody's ready to go after that long bus trip. How did you feel kind of warm ups and getting out on the field and, you know, were they ready to go and kind of how were they dialed in? Yeah, I definitely felt like our guys were ready to play. I mean, uh, we, we, did, we structured the trip and get there, uh, leave on Thursday. Do a walk through Friday and then, uh, you know, kind of get to the stadium early. Uh, it's a long walk from the locker room to the field. So we want to make sure we kind of eliminate that as much as we can. So we didn't go back at the warm ups. We didn't go back at halftime. Uh, we just stayed up there and just eliminate some of the steps. And I feel like our guys handled it well. Uh, you know, a little bit longer halftime in that conference, go 25 minutes instead of 20. So some things to adjust to, but our guys are troopers and they handle it very well. Let's get into the first half highlights and just talk about the first half a little bit. You win the coin toss, defer to the second half, and your defense really just sets the tone right from the beginning of this game. Some of the, the best tackling and hardest hitting, and let's just get into the backfield that I've seen in a, in a while. No, that, that defense line is, I feel like, one of the best in the country. Uh, and our front seven is relentless, and our guys, even on the back end, they do a great job of uh, you know, taking away some of the, the easier throws and making it easier for our D-line in that time to get back there. So very excited about our defense, where they play, and they know there's a lot of improvement on just like all three facets of the game, but excited about how they're playing right now. You kind of came out and not conservative necessarily, but just kind of methodical. You, you get a drive, get the first points of the game, take it all the way down the field. C.J. Wilson doing a lot of the work, both running and catching, and then Tavantes Woods caps it off with a seven-yard touchdown. Yeah, that, sometimes that happens, unfortunately. C.J. had a big run on the fourth down that oh, our line blocked up great. Uh, and so C.J.'s pretty gassed after that, so we give him a blow. Uh, whenever we get down there and Jamontez Woods does a great job on the toss outside zone to go uh, go score and you know, really we take one shot and they played it pretty well. We get beat up front on uh, one play but other than that uh, you know that was the only negative play that drive so excited about how we started and excited that you know we were able to score on the first drive. Kind of a slow first quarter 7-0 at the end of the first quarter but then you get in the second quarter and there comes the big play. Pee Wee finds Caden Leggett 47 yard touchdown. Caden just ran past the people. No it was a great job by uh, O-line really you know, that was Pee-wee's go through the progression. That's his fifth read on that play. So they don't have a lot of time to, to do that, a great progression read. Uh, and so great, great throw by him. You know, we haven't really thrown that ball that much on that play, but a great job by Caden winning the route and breaking inside. And so uh, overall, just a great job by the, by everybody on that, that uh, drive right there. McKenzie would sneak in the field goal, make it 14-3. to three. Nice 47-yard kick. And, and really, it was some penalties that kind of, you know, allowed that to happen, uh, roughing the passer and some other things that kept that drive alive. But you guys turn around and answer able to get that next touchdown, you know, make it 21 to three before going into the locker room at halftime. And that one was uh, 16 yards to John Giles and he kind of runs that that fade to the corner of the end zone. It's right there. Yeah, no, it was, uh, we, we wanted to load the box, go 12P and do an out and up on the sideline. We thought like we can get a one-on-one, -on -one, get their guy to jump. And John made a great, uh, a great route, great catch. Uh, like you said, the, some of the penalties are stuff we got to eliminate and kind of take take out of the game and start, stop worrying about everybody else but us. Take advantage of the opportunity to worry about our best and playing at our best. Uh, but, you know, I like how we executed and responded to their field goal. 21-3 would be at the score at the half. They go back and forth with possessions right, right before that we went to the halftime whistle. But uh, ended up being a good first half, but lots to talk about and work on for the second half. We'll have those second half highlights for you coming up next on the UWF Football Show. For those who sweat in determined pursuit, and those who meet the morning with a firm handshake and a smile and breathe between stages of unwavering effort. Andrews Institute, for those who move. John, you guys had a heck of a day, defensive line. I mean, just kind of living in the backfield. How Already in the backfield, that's the, that's the anthem that we go by. But uh, it felt great, though. I told uh, the guys, I'm like, we're going to be the front runners to the defense. If we do a good job, it's going to make everybody else's job easy. So, what, What's the mentality up there with you guys? I mean, it looks like it, let's all meet at the quarterback, right? I mean, it looked like Jake was getting in on it, Aiden was getting in on it. <laughs> it's a race. We talk about that all the time in the locker room. We want to be like, man, I was right there, bro. But uh, 
all in all, I feel like just that pressure, applying that pressure constantly throughout the game is going to make them fold up. So We got a chance right there to hear from John McMullen, your defensive tackle, had uh, three sacks in the game. He did. <laughs> in his four Great tackles. Player. I mean, he had him. Aiden Sweat was in on the quarterback. I mean, Byron Perrier got in there. Everybody was you know, just all over it. No, it was a party in the backfield. Those guys say that all the time and, and trying to get back there and uh, cause disruption for the quarterback anytime you – you know, it can hold off and, and be great in coverage. It gives that D-line an extra second or two to get back there. So our D-line is relentless. They get after the football, and I'm excited. Those guys are on our team and on anybody else's. They would keep that going in the second half. Take a look at some of those second half highlights and really the defense setting the tone, really smothering McKendry, not really allowing the offense. And McKendry with, with a quarterback who wasn't even on there too deep, at least mine, mm -hmm. uh, wide receiver moves to quarterback. They try to get the ball. We talked about it. The Yogi Flagler, you guys were kind of good at keeping him in check. Yeah, no, that was kind of the focal point. It's like you can you can contain him a little bit. You can have success on defense. And, you know, he's still got his catches. He had at least eight catches, I think, for 80 or 90 yards. But he's a great player for a reason. They're going to find ways to manufacture getting the ball. Uh, but I thought we did a good job of trying to hit him up overall on defense. Go almost through the whole third quarter, and it's just kind of a defensive game and just a little fit. Felt a little disjointed offensively. And then you get one of those plays that springs the, the next touchdown, the fourth touchdown of the game, where kind of Pee Wee scrambles around. He finds John Giles. Giles looks like he's going out of bounds, and then he's not. And then John's running over defenders, and Caden's leading the convoy. You're in the end zone, 77 yards. No, that was a great play. Good job of those two guys being on the same page on the play call. Uh, John is, uh, is exactly what we know John should be. Uh, and he did a great job of just relentless effort, uh, even running guys over. He's, he's hurt over a guy in the first week. He's ran a guy over now. Uh, so he, he's he's a great player, great kid, and excited he's he's part of us at UWF here. Your defense forced a turnover in the game, had another interception, and then really, though, forced over a couple times on downs, which is as good as the turnover, and really put McKendry behind the chains over and over again by putting them in third and longs. Yeah, absolutely. Whenever you get a chance to one catch a pick by DJ Barnes, a true freshman who a uh, great interception by him, welcome to college football. Uh, but then also, it's always tough as a play call when you're behind the sticks. Time to change second, you know, 10 plus, second, or third, and long plus. Uh, so, our guys did a great job of giving them the long field and making sure they had a lot of, a lot of distance to go get the first down, which is great on defense. You guys, you know, had an opportunity. You were behind the sticks a couple of times, made a couple of good plays to get back in it. A couple fourth downs, you went for it. Uh, traditional, where you line up and do it. You had a punting situation, call a timeout, you come out, you run a fake punt. Yeah, no, we, we've practiced that for a long time now. We've been ready since we first put it in, and, and our guys did a great job executing. Coach Rimza, Jordan Rimza was, was ready for it. We we had to call a timeout for a substitution, uh, just a miscommunication, uh, and then we kind of communicated, hey, Caden, what'd you see there? And they gave us a look to, to run that. So we said, hey, Coach Rimza, hey, you good doing it? I said, you, you dag, I'm right, and let's go do it. So uh, it was a great uh, momentum shifter, great opportunity for those guys to go make a play. Unfortunately, gets called back for a holding, but. Uh, it was a great be able to shift the field and then go score right after that. And then it really capitalized. I mean, yeah, there's the penalty that does bring it back after it looked like a touchdown, but Pee Wee finds Jacoby Quillen in the end zone, and you got another touchdown pass. Pee Wee, by the way, great day, 21-28, 329 yards, and, and those touchdowns sprinkled in, you're up 35-3. Uh, to three. Weird score again. Yeah, no, two weeks in a row. I don't know if any ever head coach has ever done that, back-to-back -back wins with the same score, but uh, Pee Wee was as good as we, we know he is. Uh, he's doing a great job of completion percentage. I think he's at 75 or 80 percent right now uh, for the first two games. So he's doing a good job of taking what they give him uh, and, and helping him out by you know giving him some some different play calls is obviously good. Uh, there's still a lot of things to improve on, a lot of things to grow on, but and I'm very excited to be able to work with a guy like him to, to uh, run this offense. We've got more to talk about here on the show. We're going to talk about your next opponent, a little trip to Tallahassee coming up on the, uh, Saturday this week. That and we're going to meet Coach Jordan Remza. Spend a little time with him, the uh, fake punt guy. That's right. right. That's coming up next on the UWF Football Show. Why do you love your favorite pair of jeans? What keeps you connected to your oldest friends? How do you know that the solution you seek is right for you? The answer is simple. It's the fit. And at Pinair Credit Union, we believe your finances should fit you perfectly. It's the right checking account for how you spend your time and money. It's the right loan for where you are and where you're headed next. It's local banking that's as comfortable as your favorite pair of jeans. So come join us at Pen Air Credit Union. You'll fit right in. Another nice game for you. I mean, what, what was working today? Yeah, just really the same thing last week, taking what they gave us. You know, there were some times where it kind of looked like we were all over the field, but, you know, it was, you know, we were managing the chaos and just going with the flow. You've got so many weapons that you can throw the football to. We didn't see as many in action today, but obviously, you know, you've got a connection with Caden, and when you need those yards, he's your guy. For sure. Uh, you know, all those guys in that room can just make plays whenever the ball comes to them. And, 
you know, you, you had John out there making crazy plays, Kobe, you know, those guys, whenever you get the ball in space, the whole 16 of them that they have in the room can all do something with the ball hands. Welcome back to the UWF Football Show. He is Coach Caleb Nobles. I'm Will Kennedy. Your team ranked in the top 10 in the country, a 2-0 and now, two straight 35-3 to wins. It is on the road again this week, back-to-back uh, -back road trips. This one a little shorter, over to Tallahassee to take on a pretty good Florida A&M team. They're coming off a loss to South Florida, but they've been ranked this year as well. What do you expect from the Rattlers? No, a lot of, a lot of team speed. Coach Willie Simmons has a great uh, team over there. They do a lot of really good things. Uh, a lot of good team speed, some big size guys that can you know, do a lot on the D-line, O-line. Uh, they play with great effort, relentless effort. You know, I can't say enough about how fast they are getting to the football. And so everybody, everybody outside our building has been talking about this one for a long time, ever since it was going to schedule back in January. So uh, our guys have been doing a good job of focusing on what we're supposed to do. But being able to scrimmage against them a couple years ago was was uh, great. We got some good film to go to watch from that stuff. And then, uh, you know, but they've made adjustments. They've changed some stuff and what they do. Uh, and they got some great talented guys. So it'll be a really good challenge for us overall. We're well, looking forward to that one. But you mentioned earlier in the show, Coach Jordan Remzo, who I know you know you brought back onto the staff. He was here before uh, in a capacity, and now he is there. You know, he's the special teams guy. He's That's working right. with your defensive backs, and uh, he's an important part of your staff. No, he's a pivotal part of our staff. He's a great uh, leader great with the guys. He's able to relate to the players, and he coaches them hard, which is what I want uh, in that room. And he does a great job of explaining things and getting the messages communicated across. So we're very excited he's part of our staff. We got a chance to sit down with Coach Remzo. I still pinch myself um, every moment here, just, just looking around the campus and, and looking around the office. I've been at two different uh, places since UWF, Faulkner University and Quincy University, but um, I can't tell you how excited I am to be back and, and work under Coach Nobles and, and work with them to elevate this program to new heights. Just for the comfort level of the players and the comfort level of the staff, I, I think it's going to be huge to, to have the continuity um, of, of guys that work together. Um, you know, working with Coach Noble since 2019, um, and, and then obviously Coach Wintrick um, is in there, and, and Coach Sanya and, and Coach Dickerson. Just, just having those coaches around that the players feel comfortable with, um, and that we feel comfortable around one another, um, I think is huge. And then that helps integrate um, the other new pieces that that we're going to br be bringing in. So um, I think for the players and just for the coaches, this this should be a seamless transition. I mean, we 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 get the opportunity to to take players in a very important aspect of their life um, going off to college the 18 to 22 year olds um, and, and we really can either help them ascend or or decline um, and, and I want to be one of those coaches that helps them ascend um, with my positivity and my love and, and my care for them um, always looking for, out for their best interests um, giving them a voice giving 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 them a platform uh, to, to be themselves um, and, and to feel comfortable along the process and then um, at the end of the day, our job is to help them graduate in four and four and a half years um, and to get a usable degree. You absolutely have to embrace it, um, and, and then you have to elevate it. Um, you have to figure out new ways to elevate the program. Um, Coach Shinnick, um, I, I, I thank him every single day uh, for allowing me to be part of this program, um, but now it's our opportunity to be able to put our little spin on it um, and, and, and put our little twist uh, to the program and, and bring in um, the same level of recruits. Um, that he's brought in and, and elevate the program. Um, I, I think that's the biggest biggest word you'll hear us say a lot is elevate. Uh, we need to find a way to take this program to the bigger heights since the has been. Um, and I think Coach Nobles is the right guy for the job to do that. You guys are hitting the road, as we mentioned. It's Florida and m Tallahassee. I know a lot of people want to come from around the state. A lot of Argo alum, Argo Nation will make that way because it might be the closest game they get of course. in a while. It's a 5 o'clock kickoff Pensacola time, 6 o'clock kickoff in that Eastern time zone. People That's forget right. we're in that little weird part of That's the state right. right there. We'll be on the radio at 4.30 with the pregame show. Uh, I know this is one your players is like, hey, the bus ride's shorter, and, and that's a team we want to get after. Absolutely. No, our guys are excited to not be traveling about 11 hours on the bus. We're excited to go just over to Tallahassee uh, and excited for this you know, great opponent we're playing. Uh, a lot of people have been talking about it for a while, and so now we finally get to line up and go against them. And so our guys are, our guys are chomping at the bit to get going on Saturday. GoArgos.com is the place with all the latest information on that. Hey, put that Argo Armada app on your phone or your tablet, too, and follow these guys and all our programs across social media, UWF Football, Twitter, or X, or whatever they're calling it now, yeah. and Instagram, <laughs> and, and Facebook, and all that good stuff. Coach, good luck this week. Thank you. We'll be back with the highlights from this one, and we'll be with you all season right here on the UWF Football Show. Go, go Argos. Argos.